Hello there, welcome back to Bannerlord of Bridge, where last time we got given another castle, but this time the enemies nearby got peace with us real soon after, so we actually kept it. Then we went and joined the campaigns of the Crusade in general, fighting against the various other Empire factions, and somehow winning a gigantic battle where I just about held on to command of the whole army and defeated the Sturgeon faction altogether. I went back home after the Sturgeon campaign and hung out in the castle for a bit, then went back to the front lines to see what was going on. I figured this town right here would be attacked because it's right next to some of our territory. So I went over, but not much is going on. I just sort of hung out and waited for some allies to show up, but they didn't. And then I realized, wait a minute, this town actually has barely anything inside it. I thought I could take it myself. However, then an enemy army showed up. So we're going to give up on that nearly a moment of glory. So yes, then I did just wait around for allies to show up and they did show up. They were just to the south fighting that same enemy army, I believe. I'm going to jump in here and pull all of the nearby allied parties into this fight. It's something like 350 of our men versus 300 of theirs, but we have a good advantage on the balance bar because I guess we have better troops. Their army is probably recently defeated or something, so it's full of recruits. As for the battle strategy, well, you know what the number one strategy is for me. Don't have my troops really participate in the fight at all because I want to keep them alive. So we make sure to form up kind of behind the battle and then we'll just creep in later to get some experience points once the enemy are all wounded and stuff and are easy to kill. Plus my archers can just sit there plucking away at stuff. The archers aren't really behaving themselves in this fight so they barely did anything and I think it's because I've got them in square formation for some reason. I think I messed up. I was like, experimenting with uh, trying the different formations and doing the thing where you drag the mouse to make their formation wider or shorter. And basically I don't think I did it very well. However, the strategy works. By the time our front line engages with the enemy's remaining troops, our men are dead, but so are most of the enemies. So we end up doing okay. Our side lost like 120 guys, but our party only lost two guys. So that's what we like to see. After that, I went to the south because I wanted to check out what our other army was doing. It had a big city under siege and I thought I'll help out. I figured the battle was already happening because their army number is going down. But actually, it's only going down because they have no food. So the besieging force is starving to death while doing the siege. And they're just going to keep doing that. So I hung around thinking maybe they'll attack and get this over and done with. In the end, though, they just lost a couple of hundred troops and then walked off to go raid some enemies, still losing troops along the way. So that was disappointing. Ultimately, nothing came of that. Clearly, it needs to be me leading these armies because the AI is messing it up. I went back north to the army we just saw earlier, and they were also doing a siege. They were also losing troops, but this time it was because they were in the middle of a battle. Thought I'd step in just to make it go a little bit better for us and snipe away at the archers to make our wall climb go good and stuff. Although I'm not sure whether this is actually better than just not fighting and letting the order resolve win it for us because we had such an advantage. Maybe the auto resolve doesn't take into account how defensible the walls will be and how the uh, ladder climbing thing will kill so many of our men. So this might have been a bad idea. Either way, we did capture the town with hundreds of casualties and we move on. The army said it was going to attack a castle on the other side of the southwestern mountain, so I also went there to help out. There were only like 20 guys defending the castle, so this was a nice and easy one, made even easier because we can actually make a significant impact by killing a couple of them. That's a big proportion of their force. In this one, I went over the ladders before the gate was opened and noticed that curiously, if I'm in the castle and the enemy are gathering to defend the gate, they don't pay any attention to me. So I could just stand here behind the gate, killing the guys as they came over to line up for the battle at the gatehouse. And that was pretty easy, so that's good stuff. I wonder if this would work in a bigger battle as well. Anyway, with that one, an enemy army came over to the castle. My army's still here and I thought maybe they'll engage, but it looks like they're unable to catch up with the enemy army. And that army is actually going around to go and attack the city that we just took. And because my army doesn't engage them, that means we're about to lose that city. And this was pretty annoying. I thought maybe I should go back and put my troops into the city garrison to try and hold it. It might be possible, I figured. However, on the way there, the enemy turned around because I got too close to them. And then we're just fighting them in a field battle. Decided not to do this. We can do the sacrifice thing to escape. It means we lose about a third of our troops and a load of gear. 
but that's better than losing all of our troops and all of our gear, which was the other option there really. And the nice thing about this is for whatever reason, it caused the enemy army to rethink its moves. It then doesn't go for the city and actually goes back to attack the castle instead. So in some ways, this worked out, our little sacrifice distraction allowed our army to engage the enemy army. So now we end up with this field battle. That's more like it. No territory will be retaken, as long as we win, of course, but we do have the advantage. And I am going to be using that advantage to my advantage. I'm going to form up behind the lines and do nothing. Or am I? Actually, as I came over to form up behind our army, the two sides had switched places and the enemy had already broken through. So just as soon as I was bravely rushing up to be the rearguard, I was bravely running away as these enemy troops charged through. Luckily, a lot of the troops aren't very good, and in that scattered formation, they're being taken down by our cav around the place. And soon, the group that broke through is taken down. Then I advance once again to bravely see the last remnants of the enemy army die. They're basically scattered at this point by the rest of our armies. So once again, we've won a battle and successfully not engaged our own troops. In fact, so successfully that of the 150 deaths on our side, none of them were from our party. That's what we like to see. We are staying strong. So with that done, I now wondered what to do. I thought I'll just stay here, I guess, and defend the castle in case something happens. But while I was just walking backwards and forwards, we have a new war starting. It's the Southern Empire, and this is the big one because the Southern Empire are like our main bordering power. They're all over the place. So this is a very important one. And perhaps most importantly of all, they are the guys who have all of the territory that's around our castle. So now our precious castle is on the front line again. With that in mind, I thought we we're going to abandon this position and start working our way back there. It's quite far away and through enemy territory for most of the journey, but let's do it. First, there was a nearby army raiding this random village, and I thought I'll step in and attack them. Even though they have more troops, our army's pretty good, thanks to them being alive for a long time at this stage. So we have a lot of leveled up troops, and we get a big balance bar advantage. We can also stand on top of a hill and rain arrows on them. Or, we would be doing that if it wasn't just not happening. Again, I don't know why, but we've got one of these situations where the archers will not fire. I'm guessing they don't have line of sight, maybe, and they don't want to arc shots over our troops or something. Not quite sure why, but our archers proved to be completely useless. Here I'm trying to get them to charge, thinking maybe that will activate their attacking AI and they'll start shooting or something, but no, it just makes them attack in melee. So I pull them back out again, and generally the fact we have a load of strong archers is not really helping us, not only in this battle, but in a lot of other battles. So, annoying, need to work out how to get archers to work properly, and I think I have found more recently a few ways to more reliably get them to fire. They can block their own line of sight by standing too close together and things, so like even if there's someone standing just behind them, that counts as blocking their line of sight and things like that, so it's complicated. We get out of that battle with a win though, and as we move on, the Northern Empire declares war on us as well. Didn't know who this was, because they're so basically dead that I thought they just have no territory, but no, they do have a bit of a presence, and in fact, they were on my way. We saw some of their armies, so I thought I'll go attack them. But then some more bad news. Vlandia have also declared war on us. This is the big power in the west end of the map who we haven't really seen. So now the Kuzets are in trouble. We're at war with, like, everyone, and holding territory could be difficult with so much stuff going on. This is bad because if we lose territory, we're just losing progress in the game, and the last couple of parts will have been for nothing. Pretty frustrating. This is the decisive war for whether I will uninstall the game, basically. At least I did manage to catch up to the Northern Empire's faction leader, who was losing troops as he ran away from me. And actually, it was just him in the final battle, and we won. So that's something. Continuing on our way back, we had to go through the Southern Empire's core territory, and we do come across an enemy party. They were smaller than us, so I thought I'd go take them down, and in this fight I was experimenting more with the archers, just trying to get stuff to work, really, <laughs> turning fire at will off and on to see if it'll make them more aggressive, and here I'm trying some looser formations as well. In this case, nothing's happening because actually we can't see the enemy, so that's not going to help. Ended up moving up to vaguely where they were, and for a moment things started to happen. Some of our archers started shooting towards the enemy. Unfortunately, they soon stopped. 
It seems they stopped just as I selected them. Could that be something to do with it? They can't fire while you have them selected as your current controllable group. Even after the highlight goes away, they're still not firing. A few of them on the edge are firing, which makes me think maybe it's line of sight, because the guys on the edge can see around our front line a bit better. But again, shouldn't they be shooting upwards anyway? Maybe even if they do have a technical arc where they can hit the enemy, they won't fire unless they have a direct line of sight. So you can't just shoot in the enemy's direction even if you can't see them, if that makes sense. Meaning the archers, effectively, need to be in front until the last minute in the engagement. I think that might be what's going on. Anyway, after a while, looks like we won the battle. I was just sort of fiddling about at the back and the front line killed all the enemy, so that went well. Also discovered the advance command there at the last second. We'll try and use that again some other times. Now we get back to our castle and luckily enough, it's still here. It hasn't been dogpiled by the enemy who are all around it. And it's looking good, still fully upgraded. Got like 300 troops defending, so it's not going to be super easy for the enemy to take it. What I thought I'd do is just kind of hang around and make sure it doesn't fall. Not really sure what to do in this war with so many enemies on the field. Spotted an enemy party nearby, went to attack it, then got confused because it actually changed from being in the Southern Empire to being in the Vlandian faction just as I attacked it. Not that that matters because we're at war with both of those factions. In this battle, they were sitting on the other side of this ridge and I could pretty much tell they were there. You can see the cavalry are just about poking up over the top. So I'm arcing arrows over, doing what I want my own archers to do. What I decided to do here is try and provoke the AI, just sort of be annoying, run at them, shoot a few arrows and then run back to my prepared position over here. I've got the archers lined up at the front and spaced out a bit more than the default formation as well, allowing more guys to have line of sight and get them firing. Unfortunately, this doesn't really work because after I keep provoking the enemy, they do actually charge out to attack, but it's their cav leading the charge and they just run right into the archers. Then I push the infantry forwards to receive their infantry, and broadly speaking I don't think my archers actually ended up doing anything. I'm starting to think that having archers isn't the best thing in most field battles just because of their line of sight restrictions. In a situation like this, maybe you could bunch them up and take them around the flank to try and shoot into the back of the enemy. We saw that working a little bit at least in that big battle against the Sturgeons. Don't know how effective it is. I think just having absolutely loads of melee troops and melee cav might be the way to go. Anyway, in this battle, we win just because their troops were a bit worse than mine and they routed, so we killed them as they went and got a very good ratio. After that, there was a vote for a castle that's been captured somewhere. I'm on the list and curiously, it's 0% support for all three. It seems like nobody cares who gets this castle. So I came in and voted for myself. That gave me 100% and then I did get the castle, so some sort of missed election has gone on in my favour where I somehow got the win by default. But where is this castle? Well, it's quite far away. It's right in the middle of the map, another classic frontline location surrounded by enemy territories. All good stuff, but I thought, well, let's go and check it out. We do have an army, maybe we can hold it, and maybe our original castle won't get attacked. It hasn't been attacked so far. On the way, I spotted an enemy army gathering. Luckily, it's only got one party in it so far. So I thought I'll step in here and just take them out before the gathering happens. That might stop the Empire from going and invading something of ours. In this battle, I was again trying to determine some uh, archer logic about the game. I found that in this battle, they were shooting the sky. And, well, what to make of that, I don't know. At least they're firing. Loosening the formation up makes them fire, but this time they're just shooting straight up. Maybe they really are able to shoot at things that aren't in their line of sight, so they can arc things, unlike what I thought in the previous battle. But they'll only do some weird arcs, like vertical ones. Who knows? I eventually move forward and they start shooting at something in the darkness after I tell them to fire at will again. I had put them on hold fire so they wouldn't waste their arrows shooting the sky. So yes, now they're firing. Most of them are actually doing it. The line could probably be a bit looser. I just couldn't get it to go any looser than this. Some of them are still blocking each other's lines of sight. Then the enemy actually appear in the distance and that's when my men stop firing. This is the thing I mentioned early in the series. This weird annoying effect where your troops only fire at the enemy if they're standing still. So once the enemy are running at us, the archers are just useless. Until the enemy are really close, then they will start firing at them again. But by that point, I've moved my troops forward to stop the enemy. So the line of sight is going to get blocked. Broadly speaking, these archers are useless. 
I really thought they were better than this in old Mountain Blade. I'm guessing they changed some stuff about how it calculates whether to fire or not, and it ends up just not. That's the end result of it. So yeah, I really think going for a more melee spam focused army might be good meta just because your men are more likely to be attacking the enemy at any given time. And I guess the melee troops have a shield and more health and stuff. Anyway, as for the battle, we charge forwards and just kind of win with no particular effort just because our army's better than theirs. Since a lot of AI armies tend to be packed with recruit troops, they just die really easily to our higher level troops. After that, I moved west a bit and found a small enemy party. And in this one, I just ordered everyone to charge and that was all I needed to do. You can see about half the enemy's infantry are just retreating as we attack them because they are low level. And what's left just gets overwhelmed and that's going to be the end of that. Another enemy army and officer down. So after that I was able to move on to our brand new castle and here it is. Like the other castle we got, it's trash, there's no food and it's missing a lot of the buildings. But I thought we can start changing that, I don't mind throwing cash at it and starting to build up those walls so we can defend our nice frontline location. As I was wandering around the area, another faction enters the war, the Batanians, the kind of sort of Celtic style faction. At this stage, we're literally at war with like everyone. We're only not at war with the Desert Kingdom, the Azurai. So this is dangerous because if they just all invade us, we'll lose all of our progress in the game so far and that really will be like starting again and I'll be too angry. But here's something that made me even more angry than that perhaps. I spotted my army moving towards this enemy army. The enemy army is running away so I went to engage to force them to fight. The problem is my army just wasn't close enough it turns out. I don't know what the distance is for them to join you in battles that you trigger but we weren't there. So now we're just screwed. We can't like move away even though we're the faster party. So we have to fight them. What I thought I'd do is something I figured was very clever but in retrospect isn't. I thought I'll just auto resolve it because the auto resolves happen in phases and I thought maybe it's like when you see other parties fighting on the map. The phases do happen over time so some time will pass while I'm auto resolving and then those reinforcements will come in and save me. Unfortunately, I'm guessing that only works for the AI. The player can't do that. So we start losing the battle, but then I thought, wait a minute, we're not losing that badly. We lost half our men so far, but the enemy also lost half their men. I think again, because our troops are just good in comparison to theirs, it's giving us lots of good ratios, meaning the enemy are getting wiped out. So I thought, well, let's just not retreat. Let's see if we win. And we actually nearly do win. We come super close. The enemy are down to less than 20 men of their original 500 by the time they defeat us. That was unfortunate. Goodbye to our nice powerful party that did take me a long time to build. It's very annoying because you have to do a lot of grinding and be bravely cowardly and things like that in order to get your party alive and good for a long time. So that's out the window. I did actually have a chance to fight the uh, remnants of the enemy army personally and I really hoped I'd be able to bring you me turning this around with my one against the enemy strategy. Unfortunately it was actually really unepic and bad. My horse dies, then I got on this other horse and then I just get killed by something, didn't even really see what it was. I think those melee infantry were throwing javelins or something and that was the end of that. Did not go very well at all. So that's a shame. Now we are a prisoner of the enemy army, but the army is immediately attacked by our allies after that. So they're unable to move and then they die. I am released, so at least we don't have to wait for that to happen. But now it's not like we can get our stuff back. Our inventory and our companions and half of our army who are technically still alive, just wounded, are now in the allied army. They've sort of absorbed all that as loot and we can't get any of it back. I came to talk to them like maybe there's some way I can... Um, use some scripting in the game that gives you troops that it's registered as yours back or something but no it's not that sophisticated. There is the option there to barter for prisoners but I guess I'm not allowed to do that for whatever reason. So I was unable to be saved by my allies. Technically that massive disaster was my fault but I still felt pretty annoyed about it and that I've been cheated in some way. I go around all the villages and grab all the recruits I can, some of which come at not recruit tier, they come at like the infantry tier. So we've got an army of something but it's mostly trash and unfortunately our castle is being besieged by a thousand battalions. So we're going to lose that castle pretty fast. I did though get revenge for the castle because the army took the castle then moved south and ran into one of my armies moving nearby and since I was still there I can jump in and participate in the fight. This was an interesting one because the enemy were really bunched up like they were trying to form 
some sort of Shiltrum formation or something, and our horse archers just kind of moseyed about next to them doing some damage, I presume, if they're firing. They definitely are firing sometimes, at least. Then the two sides just run at each other, but we have like quadrupled their numbers, so somewhere in the blob the enemy will just be absorbed and they'll get taken down, so this is revenge for the castle we never had a chance to love. And of course, taking out this battalion army will probably stop them invading us. So that's good stuff. We're actually doing pretty well in this massive war against everyone. We haven't been like losing territory everywhere, which is what I worried would happen. We went on after that and moved to the southwest to attack this imperial town with our thousand or so troops. This is a pretty easy one for us, we can just storm in and take them out with an auto-resolve really, but I'm in there anyway helping out, presuming that this is better than taking the auto-resolve in that it gives you fewer casualties. Ordered my men to stay at the back and then we come up to get the job done. You actually can't get all of your men to not fight in the siege because I think with like the rams and the siege towers, the uh, guys who actually staff them are kind of picked at random, so some of your men will get drawn away automatically to do the siege stuff, and I don't think you can stop them from doing that. That's unfortunate, so we might actually lose some guys. Anyway, as for the fight, well I'm just standing here sniping enemies off the wall. The walls are packed with enemies, so we're going to be losing absolutely loads of men on the way in. But killing archers early on really makes a big difference, each archer on the wall could easily get several kills. So if you thin out the wall, you're going to save like a couple of dozen troops going in there, and that could make the difference. I ran out of ammo so I actually went in to fight in the big melee inside the gatehouse, or just beyond the gatehouse that is. I'm using the Imperial Spear that someone recommended at some point. Other people have recommended I use the uh, Kuzate Spear, the Glaive. I'll try that too. The nice thing about this spear and the Glaive is that you can swing it instead of stabbing it, so it's just a bit better to do things. It looks kind of goofy, but we are getting a load of damage actually, it's really powerful for some reason, and the enemy get cut down. Here's a look at the political situation. A couple of the wars ended while I was walking about just now. So we're no longer at war with the Vlandians, but they did conquer the stuff that we conquered earlier in this part. So we certainly have lost some territory in this war overall. At least it makes our territory a bit of a nicer shape, apart from this place we just captured, which is out in the middle of nowhere. And at least there are fewer people attacking us. Most importantly, the Southern Empire aren't at war with us and they didn't take my initial castle. So we still have our home base. After this, I went to follow our army up into Batanian territory. Only a small army from us is going up there, but I thought I'd go help them out. Annoyingly, while trying to catch up with them, a band of enemies attacked me. And the annoying thing is, my party isn't that good, so not ideal. Might actually lose some guys here. The thing is, all the good archers we had before probably weren't doing anything, so having a little bad archer group at the back probably isn't that different. And as for the melee fighting, with the two-thirds damage thing from the difficulty level, and with the enemy tending not to have that good troops either, we can win out and apparently things go really well, you can see with the uh, bar at the top. We barely lost anything to defeat them, I'm actually surprised that did go so well, we just annihilated them somehow. And then after the battle, we can use this to pick out good prisoners to put in our prisoner party, we could eventually recruit them to make our party better, and of course all the XP means my recruits are being turned into regular troops. So we are now getting back into things. It does take a, a while, but in an abridged series that's not a problem for you at least. So yes, we're coming back and I followed the army up to attack a nearby castle, some other allied parties joined us as well. This was another pretty standard castle battle. The only difference between this and the regular ones is they actually died because while standing under the wall sniping people they bothered to shoot back this time. <laughs> Unfortunate, we got cut down but we still won the battle easily. Then some of the army went off to fight with a nearby enemy army. I couldn't join the fight at first because I'm too wounded. Luckily we can take advantage of the fact that for the AI time does pass while they're fighting, so I can join the fight later once I have enough health to be allowed to come out and take a look at it. And here it is, another dreary night battle, or perhaps just a really foggy battle. I don't know. And we're going to end this part here. Basically, we're going to win this fight because we have enough stuff to just run at them and win. Are we going to win the war though, or the campaign in general? Well, I don't know. It seems this game kind of gets into a slog where you can put a lot of work into capture stuff, but you might just then lose it, like while you're on the other side of the map or something, and that's the end of that. I don't know if we can force our faction to ally with other factions to make ourselves be in a strong position or something, but as far as I can tell, it's just going to be sheer luck whether we conquer enough stuff without the other factions noticing and ganging up on us. 
So what I'll probably do with this campaign is play on a bit more and see if it looks like we have any hope. And if we don't have any hope of actually getting anywhere, I probably won't bother showing the rest of it, just because even if we do eventually conquer the world or whatever, it'll take so long and be so repetitive from a content point of view, it's probably not worth looking at it. I do want to show off everything that's in the game in this series, so I'm going to go out of my way to try a few more things before we totally finish up, including doing the story quests, whatever they might be, and trying to get married as well. That may allow me to advance personally in the game by getting a city or something by stealing it from my new husband. Well, we'll see what we can do, starting in the next part.